Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and uh, we're going to continue our discussions today about core async with a discussion of batching. So we're going to define some functions today and extend our pipeline yet again to have a new type of, um, of function allowed in here. Basically, what we want to be able to do is, is, is define not a function, but a, uh, a patch into the pipeline. Um, and we'll see what that means in a little bit. But our goal today is to have something called batching. And what we want batching to be is uh, something that in particular um, uh, will go, uh, we get a lot of results that come through here, um, a bunch of integers or strings of integers and stuff. And what we want to do is to batch those results up. So we want to wait a certain amount of time, 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds a second, and then take as much as we can from the input channel in that time. And then after that amount of time has expired, put into the output channel. And what this allows us to do is create a system that um, would batch up uh, data, for instance, going into a database. So um, one example of this is uh, one uh, situation I was talking to a coworker, they had a Datomic database and uh, data was just flying in at a really fast rate. Now, Datomic prefers if you have a lot of really small transactions to kind of batch those up into, into groups. Um, so we're gonna do something here. Let's say that we had um, uh, 10 messages a second coming into the system. We may not wanna actually have a transaction for each one for whatever reason. I mean, 10 is actually pretty low, but let's just use that number. Um, but what we could do is batch those up and say, okay, once a second, we're going to commit data to the database and we're going to accumulate data in that time. Um, and so that allows us to um, kind of make more efficient use of our resources. Okay, so what we're going to do is define um, something called a record uh, patch. And this patch is going to have three um, items in it in, proc, and out. And eventually we'll hook this into our pipeline so that um, so that in proc, in is the input channel, proc is the, out, is the um, process running, and out is the output channel. And uh, we should be able to uh, configure this in our um, a system uh, that we have down below and kind of patch this in. So instead of this being a function that takes one thing and returns either a channel, a value, or a, um, uh, an, a sequence, it could just patch itself in um, with the input and output channels. And we'll, we'll uh, specify that to the pipeline function via this patch record. Okay, so let's define our batcher. It takes milliseconds, which is the amount of time, and we're gonna make some channels. We have an inner channel, in, and um, we need, uh, we'll define out a little bit later, um, and proc is going to be a go. So what we're going to do is we're gonna loop here, and uh, t timeout milliseconds, and if you look up here, I've pulled in a few more things. We have chan timeout, alts, close, so on and so forth. So we're gonna create a timeout and initialize it to that, that millisecond time. And then what we're going to do is say let v of c um, alts, and we're gonna take from both uh, T and N. Um, if you haven't dealt with alts before, this is what it does, is it, it'll try to take from T or N, either one, whichever one succeeds first, um, it will return the value and the channel that succeeded. So now we can easily go down here um, and say comp P identical, and we can uh, say dispatch, dispatch on the channel. So if it's T, then we have a timeout. And what we're going to do is put into our inner channel a namespace keyword called split. And we'll see how that's used in just a little bit. And then we're gonna recur with a new timeout. So we'll reset our timeout after, after that amount of time. Um, for our in, if it's not nil, if the value is not nil, then we're going to do, put that into inner and recur with a new timeout. And actually, that's uh, what I had in my example I looked at before. But that's not what we want. Uh, because if we, if we did this timeout ms, what that would mean is every single item that comes in would reset the timeout. And we just get this ever-growing buffer that would never really be yielded. So instead, what we're going to do here um, is we're going to do t. So we're going to reuse the timeout and only reset um, the timeout uh, up here when the timeout completes. So now what we're going to do is to close, enter, 
if the value is nil. So that's, that's our cleanup, right? Okay, so all the way up in here, uh, we have our proc. Now out is going to be defined as async partition by, and our partition function is going to be this. So what we're gonna say is if the partition, um, if, the, if the value, um, uh, so what partition does is it looks at the values coming in and every time it sees the value returned by this function, this input function change, it creates a split in the partition and creates a new sequence of items. So if we do this, what we'll get is sequence of values and then a sequence with only split in it and then another sequence of values because this will cause it a toggle, right? It'll be true, it'll be false, 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 true, we got a split, false, 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 false again. So we'll get like segments like that. And then uh, we're gonna do enter as our, as our function here. So now what we're gonna do is async remove and we're gonna remove from that comp partial identical uh, split first. So what this will do is remove those sequences that only have uh, whose first item is split. So those those, those um, sequences that come through that have the split in there, we're just going to kind of cut those out. And then down here, we're going to create a patch in out or in proc and out. Okay. So now let's define the patch and the batcher. So what we're going to do then is we'll have this thing here that's called um, one batcher. And let's say 10 milliseconds. Now, this will cause a problem for all of our um, code that's not in here. And we don't, we don't have a sync and everything else in here yet. So let's go ahead and load that in. Uh, wait for 100, log C, we'll get our log, pipe, uh, map, Pipeline. Okay, good. Now, now if we run this, what we should see is failure. Patch cannot be cast to closure IFN. Right. So we got this problem here, and that what is what is doing is trying to call our patch of uh, method down here. Uh, let's see here. Um, it's trying to call it here with this map ext and it's just failing and outputting our messages, right? Okay, so let's clear out that REPL and make sure everything's still fine here. Good. Okay, so so what we need to do is we need to look at it here and say if uh, f is a instance of patch, then we're going to do something different. Otherwise, we're going to do our old code. So if it is a patch, then we'll, let's destructure it here. Keys in and out. So if it's a patch, what we need to do is wire it in. So our out, oh, the value returned from this reduce, if you remember we're reducing here, we want to return the output channel, that's out, that's fine. But the input then needs to be wired to the previous C. So we do async pipe from previous C into input. There we go. So now if we run this, there's our output. We're getting sets of three items here batched up in 10, uh, 10 millisecond intervals. Because that's all the, ever, all the amount we ever get in this um, from this here. And the last item is this 43, and that's it. So if you see here, these are waiting for 100 milliseconds. So the batcher is, is kind of running um, out of work to do because it's it's only getting three items at a time and then waiting and waiting and waiting and it's actually waiting ten times in between each of these items here. So um, maybe we can maybe we can crank this up a little bit higher. Let's say one thousand. So now we should see more items coming through. One two three six, and we don't, and that's because our weight here is still stuck at a thousand. So let's redefine that as soon as this is done here to be, okay, so let's take this back down to 100 and we'll redefine our weight here to use a hundred instead of a thousand because the name there was a little confusing. Huh? 
There we go. Okay, so they, they match. We're getting three at a time because the process is here on weight 100 is three. So now if we crank this up to like 500, we get bigger sets of numbers. And depending on how much um, uh, how much parallelism is going on and how everything's waiting, uh, we may see more or less items in these these sequences. So this is kind of kind of really nice if you're doing something like this, um, like a database. Let's say there's a lot of um, metrics coming into the system, and writing we don't want to keep like opening a log file, writing data to it, closing the log file, or so, something like that. Or perhaps we're just batching up these metrics and sending them somewhere else, and we don't want to create TCP connections every time. Um, so what we can do here is just do this batcher thing. We can like take one item, open a connection, dump this data out, close it, and continue. This also reminds me of another system I worked on um, that did this sort of thing, um, but the, the requirement we had in that system was pretty high throughput, but every once in a while you needed to reset the network connection. So this might be a way to do it too, is that you could reset the, the network connection on every um, you would write these items, reset the network connection, write the next set, reset the connection, that sort of thing. Um, the, the system we were working on really didn't like the idea of just leaving a process open for a couple minutes, or leaving a connection open for a couple minutes. It wanted to be reset every minute or so or something. So this, was, this would allow you to do that. You could set it here, set this number pretty high, send the results in batches or something like that. Uh, so that's the video for today. Uh, we may see how much farther we can take some of this. I have some ideas of um, uh, perhaps wiring this into um, some uh, online data sets to do some downloading and we could maybe um, uh, see how this all works in practice. But hopefully this helps. Another thing that we can do too with this batcher, and we might look at this next time, is to also provide a limit and say, you know what, we're only going to either um, we're going to either do a certain amount of time or a certain number of items. And so uh, what that could be is that we would maybe want to flush this buffer in this partition by creates a buffer internally. We maybe want to flush that buffer every certain amount of um, uh, time, uh, but we also want to flush it every X number of items. And so we could keep a counter here um, of, of that. Um, uh, so thank you for watching, and I think we might cover that next time.